can you can you point at me again? Like, okay, they knew what they were doing with Van Zeeks. There's no goddamn. They knew what the fuck they were doing with him, <laughs> and I fucking appreciate it so much. So where we last left off, we finished off the case. We found out how our good man Kazuma died. I'm so upset that he's dead, but it is what it is. So now we are going to take his place into the expedition into England and let's see how this goes. I keep forgetting that I, yeah. Episode three, the adventure of the runaway room. Oh. Yes. Ooh, uh, okay. And yes, I am excited for Deltarune. Glancing over my records of the late last century, I am faced by the events of a certain bitter winter. Ooh. A murder in a carriage as it sped through dense London fog in the dead of night. A murder, you say? Though the victim and the perpetrator were the only ones inside, there were multiple witnesses to the crime itself. Oh boy, is this gonna be one of these? However, none could have imagined at the time that such a seemingly obvious case as this would end in such a horrendous manner. My friend, Mr. Herlock Jones, once said of the incident, I believe that perhaps that case was indeed the prelude. The beginning of a long concerto that impressive Japanese student and I were to play together. Ooh. Okay. Oh, animations! Ah. I love seeing animations. <laughs> Amazing. Is, is this really just a railway station? Railway station or not, I've never seen such an enormous building before. <laughs> and look at all the steam locomotives. This country is incredible. I think you the salty the pants sub. has gifted a sub to Battle Nugget Bot. Oh God! <laughs> Battle Nugget Bot gets a sub once again. <laughs> Thank you so much, salty pants. I appreciate it. I feel like, like I'm dreaming. So this is the capital of Great Britain. Yes. So, where to? Oh, hello. Climb aboard. I'll take you wherever you want to go. Hm. In that case, um, this Supreme Court in Whitehall, if you wouldn't mind. My pleasure. Wow. And I appreciate you I too. I suppose you're uh, <laughs> visiting students from abroad, eh? Yes. <laughs> So, well then, I hope you enjoy your stay. Oh. And welcome to the center of the world, Great Britain's mighty capital, London. My ass said England. I meant London. <laughs> I noticed I said England. London. My bad. Whatever. We're going to a foreign land. We're in a foreign land right now. Is this a courtroom or a library? British Supreme Court. Oh, okay. Lord Chief Justice's office. I was like, this is a really weird courtroom. <laughs> oh, Lord Chief Justice's office. I like the gears. Wow. Very flashy. What an incredible place. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. It's so imposing. It's it's almost suffocating. This place is breathtaking. It looks like a fortress. It's pretty high tech looking. <laughs> there are some stone buildings like this in in Japan now, of course, but they've only been built in the few short decades since we opened our borders to the outside world. 
An authentic example like this has quite a different impact. Oh, wouldn't you agree? A far cry from the wood and paper most of our buildings are constructed from. It's, cer it's certainly unfamiliar. That's right, they have paper and wooden shit and then this London's all like gears, metal, steam, blood. <laughs> more blood, blood, and more gears and steam. <laughs> But I think there's more to the differences than just construction materials. <laughs> what is this place again? This is the court. Someone's courtroom's office. This is the Lord Chief Justice's office, Naruhodo-san. The Supreme Court of Great Britain. <laughs> Wait, Rose, do we have zooms? Yeah. <laughs> I like how you asked that, and I did it. All right, I'm gonna chill for a little bit, have a good stream. Aw, thank you, salty pants. Oh man, we're back on the blood again. <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with having a bit of bloodlust. Okay. <laughs> the Lord Chief Justice. We had instructions to report here at this time, if circumstances were different. We were supposed to let the Lord Chief's Chief Justice know that we had arrived from Japan. But Kazuma can't, because he's dead dead <laughs> no so instead we are here in a different capacity as envoys to report the news of kazuma sama's death yes and having delivered his or her message an envoy's duty is done so we'd have to return to japan if we want to remain here in great britain i have to take kazuma's place as the law student selected for the study tour Yes, which means that you need to requisite a, a qualifications as a lawyer. That's right, because we did like a fucking super, super, super crash course on law studies, and Suzato would make sure she beat that shit in us. Like, she shoved law up our ass to make sure we absorbed it. <laughs> like, we, we are law itself at this point. <laughs> which is what I've been studying for. Here in Great Britain, it is the Lord Chief Justice who appoints lawyers. So that's the second reason why we're here, to have you officially recognized as a lawyer. It's the only way that we'll be able to, to remain here in London. Right. I hope I'm up to scratch. Ah, good morning. Sorry for keeping you. Ryunosuke did the crunch that no one should ever do. <laughs> for real. Oh! Oh, oh, hell. Um, I would like to be your lawyer student if, uh, <laughs> if you would like. <laughs> Hello, Mr. J Mr. <laughs> Law Justice. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh. I trust you weren't too exhausted after your long voyage from Japan. Oh, no. I I'm perfectly fine, only except my friend's dead. But everything else is fine. <laughs> it seems I'm one hour, 12 minutes, and 47 seconds late. My apologies. Oh, God. If you reacted to him like that, then God forbid he meets someone else later. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 don't mention it. We're never happier than when we're standing around with nothing much to do. How fortunate. So, introductions. I'm Male Stronghearts, Lord Chief Justice of the British Empire. Oh, and my name's Black Rose, Master Pokemon Trainer. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Okay, that'd be too much fun. <laughs> okay, I need to calm down. <laughs> oh god. If I <laughs> I need to make like just a fan or girl <laughs> compilation after this shit, I swear. <laughs> uh, and I feel like a little mouse under an elephant's foot. 
Come on, Mr. Nutterholder, don't be a mouse. <laughs> Please keep in pants, thank you. <laughs> oh, um, it's it's an honor to meet you, Lord Chief Justice Strongheart. I'm Ryunosuke Nutterholder from the Empire of Japan. Well, Mr. Nutterholder. Welcome to London, the capital of our glorious British Empire. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. I'm gonna have very fun in this in this chapter. I like I like London so far. London is great. <laughs> so, what are your impressions of our capital so far? How do you like London? Oh, I like London very much right now. I am very impressed with London right now. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> Help! <laughs> I've been so nervous ever since I got here that I can't remember a single thing about the city. It's simply splendid, isn't it, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, we, we had a wonderful view of some of L London streets from the carriage on, on the way here from the station. Everything is so impressive and grand. I must say I'm almost lost for words. I'm glad to hear you like it. The city boasts tramways, piped water and gas, even cables supplying electricity. We spearhead every revolutionary new technology in the world. Every vi visitor t to London is astounded. Oh yes, astounded is the word. Thanks for saving me there, Susato-san. And everyone seems so jolly and full of vigor. Yes, there's much excitement about the upcoming Great Exhibition we will be hosting here in London. Great Exhibition? Will you be the exhibition? <laughs> Cultural and technological achievements from around the globe are to be exhibited here in our great city. It will be the greatest spectacle of its kind in history and will make Paris's World Fair look like a toy shop. Gosh, I can hardly imagine how magnificent it's going to be. Great Britain's capital city is nothing but magnificent. London is the center of the modern world. Even if you do say so yourself. The sun will never set on our great empire. Because it's always shining bright, right? Perhaps it is fate that in these progressive times, we welcome the visitors from the land of the rising sun. Right, um, let's... Can I... Can I present the badge? My armbands, if you want to call it. Uh, present. Look at my armbands! No, 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 no. Pre Lord Strongheart, may I show you this? <laughs> to accept this item, issue a receipt, examine it thoroughly, and make a formal statement of my findings. Would require something in the region of 24 seconds of my time. Sorry? Does the item warrant 24 seconds of my time, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, damn. Let's leave it for now. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, okay. You are a very, very strict person. We will not get along well at all. I would piss him off for wasting his time. <laughs> um, Lord Chief Justice, I think you were expecting a student of law for this study tour, weren't you? Absolutely. A Mr. Kazuma Asogi, if my memory serves. That's right. <clears throat> the British government has already been telegraphed a full report on the situation. I understand the young man lost his life aboard the steamship bound for our shores. That's amazing. The news reached him before we even arrived. My country naturally extends its deepest condolences to yours. Oh, thank you. And you honored this appointment specifically to inform me of, of, of the news? Yes. We are here in the capacity of envoys from J Japan to report the sad news in person. They tell me you Japanese are a people of, of protocol and c c courtesy, and I see that is true. <clears throat> and it is with some regret that I must inform you 
that the death of the young lawyer means this study tour arrangement can no longer proceed. If you would just hear us out, Lord Strongheart. Ooh, Susato. What do you have to say, madame? It's about the study tour. Mr. Naruho, though, here would like to make a proposal. Would he now? Well, Mr. Naruho, though? This is it, then. The moment of truth. Make me your lawyer, bitch! <laughs> Alright, just turn me to a lawyer. I'll be the best lawyer ever. The thing is, Lord Justice, uh, Lord Strongheart, I was wondering if perhaps you would consider allowing the study tour to go ahead? Don't misunderstand me. Britain would ideally like to see the tour go ahead. But without a lawyer from your country, there's nothing to be done. Well, in that case, what if there was someone else? Another lawyer from Japan, I mean. <clears throat> Me. Is there something I don't know? Oh, there's there's a lot of things you don't know about me. I am I'm a very interesting person. You mean me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only a single lawyer was invited to Great Britain from your country. And that was Mr. Osogi. At least that is what I've been led to understand. Well, um, the thing is, <laughs> this isn't really going well at all. <laughs> I just can't seem to find the right words to say to this man. <laughs> Mr. Naruho, though, I, I, I could ruin things here if I'm not careful. Well, what am I going to say? If there's someone else here from Japan who could be described as a lawyer, it's... Well, it's me! No shit! It's me! It's me! I can do it! <clears throat> Is that so? Yes. I mean, I, I, I don't actually have any qualifications as such, but... No qualifications, you say? And yet you still claim to be a lawyer? I, I have acted as a lawyer in court before. Only once as it happens. And I had Cosmo to help me, and I was the accusing, but glossing over the details. I, I was lawyer in court. Hire me, please. I've been spending every spare moment on the journey here to Great Britain studying. I've learned all about... I've learned about British law and court proceedings while I was on board the SS Buria. The voyage from Japan is some 50 days, I believe. Not what you might call a full education. Oh, believe me, I, I, I rammed that shit in my head. I'm literally coded to be a good lawyer. <laughs> to become a qualified lawyer here in Britain. Not only do you need a university, d a university degree in law, you must also complete several years of training. I realize it's far too short a, a period of time. But... I can't just go back to Japan. Kazuma, Mr. Osogi's journey had only just begun. Coming here on this study tour was all the thought was all he thought about. I have to carry on and do everything he planned to do. I know it must sound like I have an overly inflated opinion of myself, but I would do anything to prove that I have what it takes. Any test you care to set me. Just one chance. That's all I'm asking for. Please. He's gonna make me do a case. Watch. Hmm. 31 seconds. Sorry? Your opening statement there, Mr. Nutterho, though. It was 31 seconds long. Not too brief. Not too protracted. A perfectly judged appeal, I would say. Which is a skill that would stand you in good stead as a lawyer. Oh, thanks. So, you're willing to put those words to trial, are you? Well, I'm all for entertainment. Oh, he, he, he's gonna make us do the case, watch. Let me ask you one thing first, sir. Uh, yes? You say you intend to do everything Mr. Stogie planned to do. Are you firmly set on that path? Well, yes. That's my intention. I see. 
Am I imagining things? Or did his expression just alter a fraction there all, all, all of a sudden? I can't tell because I had to read subtitles. Very well. You have your wish. I'll give you a chance. Oh, thank you. A test to become a specially certified lawyer. Whether you pass or fail is entirely down to you. R really? Oh, what what is the test? So, what form will the test take exactly? Tell me, Mr. Naruhodo, what do you consider the role of a lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So let's have you defend someone. See, I knew it. He's gonna put us on that case. Huh? I fucking knew it. Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an apt trial about to begin later today. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as yet. So this will be welcome news. <clears throat> t t t t t t today <laughs> straight away that that that's that's some pretty fucked up shit if you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty you'll have passed my test what could be simpler Ugh, how do i get myself into these situations well could i ask what sort of trial is it lord strongheart hmm yes good question ah i remember It's a murder trial, of course. It wouldn't be Ace Attorney without a murder trial, of course. Uh, a murder? An extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case, if the defendant is found guilty, he will, of course, be sentenced to capital punishment. Capital punishment? Who? He'll be put to death? Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows without exception. Presumably, you... You read that much in your short C-based introduction to British law. We, we can't possibly agree to such a test. We would be toying with the man's life. I am the Lord Chief Justice, and I've decided it's acceptable. But you can't do that, can you? There's no need to overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. See, that's easy for you to say. I'm over here gonna have to make estimations, read shit. I don't even know the whole basis of the case. I have to educate myself on this. And then you expect me to get a not guilty on this shit? So the defendant may live or die depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, he'll be hanged. Yeah. Mr. Naruhodo, you've come to me claiming to be a lawyer. Y yes I did. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to, to do a lawyer's job. Right. Go, go hard or go home. <laughs> He's literally just saying, you want to be a lawyer? Go hard or go home. <laughs> and you said you intend to see through the to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Asogi. You have to use Big Brain. It's perfect for you, Val. Oh yeah, perfect for me, for, for this case. <laughs> I would like to understand just how far you're willing to go in, in order to make that happen. He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You fall in silence. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial begins shortly. I need an answer from you now. Oh, oh what's it to be? <clears throat> If they actually give you like a yes or no option, that'll be funny. Just to see like a game over screen if you press no. What do I say? Do I agree to this absurd stuff? <laughs> I like how I say that and then it gives me the choice. <laughs> okay, obviously I'm gonna do it. Like if I don't do it, then we go back to Japan and then GG, the story's done, game over. So we have to, we have to do it. All right, then. If I have to give you a decision now, my answer is... I can't do it. I can't get the words out. Just fucking say it. 15 seconds. 
Hmm, your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That was too slow. Right. So, it's as I expected, is it? Sorry? You have noble intentions but lack the resolve to see them through. Okay, okay, so I think the choices wouldn't have mattered. He probably still would have flustered and then he would have stopped me saying, uh, you are too slow with your, with your decision, sir. The test is canceled. Thank you for stopping by. What? <clears throat> Go and acquire your ticket for passage back to the east tomorrow. This conversation is over. No, 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 no. I want to do it. No, no, no. I want to do it. Yes, Lord. So, Ryunosuke, if you stop being a pussy-ass bitch and fucking do it. Thank you for offering me a chance. Oh, my fucking God. Mr. Noroholdo. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Susato, but what can I do? It's all right. I understand. You do? It's not an easy... It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. But resolve has absolutely nothing nothing to do with it. Oh, Suzato's like, look here, you little bitch. You're gonna go take your scrawny Japanese ass back to Mr. Strongheart. You go tell him we're gonna take this case. And then you're gonna fucking clench your butt cheeks and say, yes, I will do it. And then we're gonna go in court prove him wrong, and become a certified lawyer. That's how this shit is gonna go down. What are you trying to say, madame? <clears throat> I think what Mr. Sato means <laughs> is that no matter how badly I'd like to be recognized as a lawyer and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his one and only chance at trial so trivially would be utterly unforgivable, and I feel exactly the same way. No, 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 no. She's saying you get your pussy ass, bitch ass back to Strongheart's face and tell him that I will do it. <clears throat> I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test, as some kind of experiment. A lawyer may fight for his clients in court day after day. But for each one of those clients, the particular day they stand in the dock may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do that job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Yeah, 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 okay. Wait, Mr. Nutter, hold the OC. We told him off. We, 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 he's, he's moved. Then he's gonna be like, something i don't know we'll see oh was there something else it's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the old bailey from here if you leave immediately you should still be there in time but but i i, I just said that i was quite serious in what i told you the defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him what at this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. And if that happens, there's only one possible outcome. <clears throat> He'll receive the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to be like this? Because that's how London functions. Please, don't expect an answer to every question. The cold hard truth of the matter is that there is only one person now with a chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. I'm really his only hope. So, what do you say now, madame? Oh, see, he's like, look, I know you're calling me an evil person. But the guy is literally gonna die, whether you like it or not. Either he dies without somebody, or he dies with your experienced, experienced pupil. Which one do you want? Which one? Which one has has the more chance of 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 having a better outcome? We have no choice at this point, or else that guilty conscience is, is gonna be in our heads. Fuck you, Strongheart. <laughs> Me? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? 
He said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend the man in these circumstances. And I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. Oh. Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave in 2 minutes and 16 seconds. So venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. I, how can I enjoy myself when I literally had to defend a guy that could die? He's gone. Hmm, the old Bailey. If we're going to do this, Mr. Naruhodo, we must leave at once. <clears throat> Alright, let's go. The old Bailey. Actually, how good are you at accents, Val? I'm not that great at accents, I don't think. I, I, I'm not. I can't. Like, if I wanted to talk in an English accent, I, I really can't. Like, I can say some words, but I can't keep it consistent. But I'm, I'm not that great at accents. <laughs> That's I'm not doing any accents here. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness we're in time. There's still 15 minutes until the trial begins. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. I thought my teeth were going to, were going to rattle loose. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Um, look, let me, let me figure it out, okay? Stop spoiling what's to come, Chaos. Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver, and, and there's a guinea... And there's a guinea... In it for you? It's, it's one of my favorite lines from the Herlock Sholm stories, and it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're so pleased. I thought we were going to die, and we had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before the trial started. Yes, I suppose there's that. Anyway, I don't understand it. The court clerk said the defendant should be here, but there's no sign of him at all. I was expecting to see, like, Carlock Sholmes, like, doing some crazy shit in the corner. <laughs> so this is the old Bailey. Even this room for, for defendants to wait in is grand. It is actually pretty nice in here. Are you alright, Mr. Nodrohodo? I'm feeling tense. That's all. This place gives me the same sense of foreboding that I remember from the, from the Supreme Court in 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 Japan. An oppressive air, almost as if the building itself is going to crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It feels like only yesterday that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you're you're to defend is, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. You see Sholmes hanging on, on, coat, on coat hangers, and now you expect him everywhere. He is omnipresent, right? Top to the morning to you, madame. Oh my god. Why does it have to be an Irishman? What are you what are you doing following me here? <laughs> Things are fair desperate, aren't they? <laughs> are they? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry? <laughs> Would you look at those expressionless faces from the east, are you? Um we're from Japan, yes. Ah, Japan, is it right? Say no more. So, how much do you need? What? No, 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 no. We're just here because... No need to explain, fella. I've been there myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name, and all the while in a strange faraway land. Well, actually... We haven't found a place to stay yet. No. <clears throat> tis grand, tis grand. Let me start by giving you a thousand guineas. Say, say nothing now. A thousand guineas? That's, that's a lot. A, a, a thousand? That's a lot. 
Please, Mr. Sato, you don't have to shout. But a thousand guineas is... It's enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? <laughs> That's a lot. Does not into me at all. I'd like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a, a, a rainy day, you see? I've, I've enough wealth to buy the city of London two or three times over. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Well, even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Uh, that hit me in the eye. Don't get me wrong, fella. I'm not giving... I am not giving it yet no strings attached. I'll be wanting you to... i be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, just a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin, you see, is for... It's for me good self here. I'll be in the dock. We know we we're gonna defend you. See, okay. <clears throat> See, here's here, here's the thing. Whenever I read his lines, I unintentionally like there's an accent that comes out unintentionally, and I don't even mean to do it, and it's fucking weird. <laughs> it is fucking weird. So now what I want you to do is come along with me and stand here beside me. Officially, you'd be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Oh, well, the th thing is, don't worry about a thing. All you have to do is stand up there next to me, nothing more. Otherwise, you see, the trial is going to start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. Lord Chief Justice wasn't just making it all up. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask, but does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Yes. A bluster and bit blaze bluster and blazes. <laughs> do you do you know who I am? Me, one of London's biggest names. No, sorry, we've only just arrived in the city. You see. Hmm. I see. I suppose it's. I suppose it's it isn't all I suppose it isn't altogether impossible. Jesus. <laughs> well just next to Hyde Park there in the center of London is another beautiful park. Sorry, uh park? What? It's just called McGilded Park. Full of blossoming and flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. I donated it to the city, so I did. A an entire park in central London? A city of smiles, that's my vision for London. There's nothing Magnus Mint Gilded wouldn't do for the city and its queer, queer old people. Queer? I think that's how you say it. That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Ah, but now they've the gall to say I'm a good for nothing criminal. Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with with the London with the London police, I ask ya? You need a chill, McGilded. <laughs> Alright. Don't pass out. Mr. Nutterhole though. Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. Right, all right, McGilded. Um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is, we're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a study tour from Japan, you see. Uh huh. S so, if you don't have a lawyer for the trial yet, and you'd be happy to put yourself in our hands, we'll do. Was I. What was I after saying you daft. Egypt? E a daft to what? I have given you a thousand guineas to stand up there next to me, haven't I? W well, yes, but I wasn't really offering to just stand up there next to you. Oh, okay. I like the one frame composure. <laughs> oh, I think I need. To, I think I see what's what's going on here. Sorry. I know what you're thinking. This, this chancellor fella claims to have more money than the queen. 
But if that's true, why the blazes can't he hire the finest lawyer in, in all of England? Because he did it. That's the only explanation. Well, um, well, not at all. Say, Ijit, real fast. Ijit. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Ijit. Ijit. Ah. I'm gonna have a tough time with this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna have a tough time with this guy. Not at all! Although, it is a little strange, to be honest. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. That would be the fault of the Reaper. Uh, sorry? Did he just say Reaper? Aye. The Grim Reaper of of the Bailey, Lord Barak Von Zeeks. He's the prosecutor. Oh, Lord Barak Von, Von Zeeks. Is he, is he a descendant of Von Karma? That would be cool. I wonder if there's a, this, a Von Karma descendant in this shit though. That'll be, that'll be pretty cool. That'll be pretty cool. The prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Von Zeke stands, stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. Right, okay. And to this day, in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. Okay, so he hasn't lost a single, a single one. All right, so I think he is a descendant of Von Karma. <laughs> Loki, what? So it's reached a desperate situation where there's no one willing to stand in defense against the fella at all. You could say he's a living legend of the Old Bailey. Goodness, Lord Barak Von Zeeks. He must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor then. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madame. It's cursed. <laughs> cursed? What on earth? The defendant is summoned and his counsel. Please make your way into the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel? That would be me. Oh, it's his time. Well then, fella, don't let me down. But, but I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Until you showed your face here, I made up my mind, so I had. Sorry. I decided I'd have to defend myself in there. How would that have worked? But then you made an appearance, a student of the law. Wouldn't you know? Tis no accident, I can assure you of that. Tis fate. I bet it's fate. So don't get cold feet now, please. Right, he's kind of terrifying. You'll have the hot room because I know your type. Right, okay. We'll see about that because... We'll see about that. We'll see. I literally know nothing about the case or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I can't just turn my back on him. Mr. Naruhodo, the man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom, armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes, something that Cosmo would never have allowed to happen. Counsel for the defense, what are you doing? If you're late for the start of the trial, you will lose your right to stand. I'll be right there. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's happening then. My first trial in a British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. Ooh. Fire. The old Bailey courtroom with fire. Oh, damn. So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the old Bailey. 
The centuries of history in this place is palpable, isn't it? It's so different from the Supreme Court in Japan, it's super different. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Naruho, though? Oh, yes, what? Did you stop being a bitch? <laughs> your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I just can't help it. Oh, oh, wait, wait, hello? Go back. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> In the name of your majesty, the queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Not you. I want the other one. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magus Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully... Hi, Fancy. How are you? <laughs> I want to see his face so bad. <laughs> Shut up, Chaos! <laughs> that must be the Reaper of the Bailey. Oh, he can fucking reap my ass anytime. <laughs> he really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim t to the underworld. Like if he has if he has vampire teeth, it is done. If he has sharp teeth, it's done. Counselor for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? <laughs> huh? Oh yes, of course. Sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready, and I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. Ooh, uh, those eyes please me, Nipponi. And your face pleases me. Just say, your face pleases pleases the rose. Thank you. <laughs> they shroud your fear, your doubt, your tre trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Okay, look, you need to stop with the intimidation talk. Uh, a cold shiver just ran down my spine, all the way to the tips of my toes. Uh, now, Mr. McGilded, yes, my lord, you stand accused of murder, a capital offense. You could be sent to the gallows if, if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this, foreigner? Yes. As I've always said, my lord, tis a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fella is a student from some little island off in the Far East, it is n not the British way to ignore the dangers of yourself, of yourself, and give those less fortunate a fair chance. I'd like to think that acts of chivalry do the great uh, British Empire proud. Listen to Mr. McGilded. What a fine gentleman London has in him. Did you hear that he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? Mother, please, may we go play with play in the McGilded Park? Oh my god. It seems like, it seems as though everyone in the public gallery is finally behind Mr. Gilded. That's definitely welcome news. And he certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. That's because of the Reaper. Eloquently put, Mr. McGilded, and most laudable sentiments. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly remind you that you six members of the public have been selected for your Im impartial in impartiality, impartiality, impartial. Cause not wait, impar impartiality impartiality are you ready to proceed impartiality jesus christ 
Yes, my lord. If the task is to send rodders to the gallows where they belong, I'm more than ready. At the manor, his lordship always says we should dispose of of rubbish prom promptly. Naturally, I agree. Ha, any criminals here will soon be wishing they never set eyes on me. Yeah, you need to sit the fuck down, ugly. I like he's just typing, whatever. He's just gonna drink. He's like, whatever. You gonna say anything? I feel a chill. Okay. Oh, don't mind me, my dears. I'll just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts for my grandson. Ah, oh, Mr. Nodrohodo, those people are... The jury, yes. That's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right. I've only ever ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the courts, a final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passes passes the judge passes sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it will become clear as the trial... As the trial progresses. Yes. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. <laughs> My lord. Van Zeeks. I want to see him angry. I kind of like... I want to see him like in all sorts of expressions. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you'd renounce your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. Oh, you are five years on time. <laughs> so what brings you back? <laughs> Is there some change of circumstances of which the court should be aware? I leave that to your imagination, my lord. He took the bow. So the reader has been out of action for five years. Why did he have to choose today of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Naruho, though. As you wish, sir, the court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly, my lord. As your lordship is aware, this is a case of overwhelming simplicity. You must be the only ones in here who aren't aware. The incident that took place in the late evening three days past, the hour has some minutes after t I can't stop looking at his face like that is such a fucking hot angle of his face like god damn like that is the luckiest piece of i want to be that piece of paper the way he's holding that shit like hold me just i don't give a fuck <laughs> he can fucking hold me up and read me like a goddamn book i don't care <laughs> The victim was a maker of building bricks known in the community as Thrice Fired Mason. Sorry? Thrice? He was a very he was a very accomplished craftsman. The bricks he fired were said to be almost indestructible. Oh damn. Oh no. <laughs> the victim's corpse was discovered in an in an omnibus in service on the streets of London at the time. A dagger that had that had been thrust into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. I wish Shadow Earth won't be a rock's for this. Here's the op autopsy report from the investigating m medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. I shall accept that and the photograph as evidence. The autopsy report has been entered into the courtroom record. The photograph of the crime scene has been entered into the courtroom record. <laughs> and one further item of, of evidence. 
The prosecution wishes to submit these as well. Oh, they are gloves. And these are... Good lord! Is that blood council? Yes, my lord. Seized by a policeman who arrived at the scene. These gore-soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. What? Mr. McGilded's gloves had blood on them? Yes, I will accept these as evidence as well. The defendant's leather gloves have been entered into the court record. Record. <laughs> record. <laughs> How did I get into this? I'm backed into a corner before I've even started. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus, there were only two passengers traveling inside his vehicle at the time. Only two? Obviously, one of those passengers was the deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other. Can you, can you point at me again? Like, okay, they knew what they were doing with Van Zeke. There's no goddamn, they knew what the fuck they were doing with him. <laughs> and I fucking appreciate it so much. <laughs> My heart went like, doki doki. <laughs> okay, look. Van Zeeks, we we need to make a Von Rose. <laughs> we need to make a Von a Von Rose um family name. <laughs> Obviously he was pointing at me. Well, rather damning circumstances to, to say the least. Defendant would say you dude like Van Nugget. <laughs> yes, and we'll make a Van Nugget, yes. <laughs> oh my god. No, like, like if I was in court, that guy would be hanging. I'm sorry. I would be just just <laughs> My ass would be just thirsting all over Von Zeeks. <laughs> Defendant would say you. Well, of course, I have no recollection of such a thing. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mc... It's gonna be one of these cases. To be sure, I roared... I ro roared... Blah, blah, blah. To be sure, I rode the omnibus that evening. But whenever I'm in the carriage, I'm, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness and I always succumb to it. Why do I feel like I'm speaking in an accent whenever I say McGilded's lines? Like, I'm fine with every everyone else's lines, but his. It's like... It's like the words are doing something. Are you claiming... Are you claiming to have been asleep? Test the motion of the carriage, my lord. What? Lilton? Lilton? So it is, and when I open my eyes again. Lilton? Lilton? I don't hear... Okay, good, good. Good, good. It feels like I am. I don't know why. It just feels like I am. Lilton. So it is. And when I open my eyes again, I'm not going to try to say it. Twas a desperate sight before me. The body of a, of, of a man I'd never laid eyes on before in my, in my life. In me life. Me. In me life. In in the me life. <laughs> now I ask you, what good-hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fella bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. Yes, a hand. So the blood got on onto the gloves then, before the man had been killed. Is this instance, it's getting tired. Oh, lilting is a motion of swaying. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Unfortunately, ooh, unfortunately what, Von Zeeks? That statement of the drivers is only the beginning. What? That's not all of it? 
I was waiting for the desk slam. Me and Von Zeeks need to have a private court conversation. Like when break happens, courtroom break, just Von Zeeks, me, you in the break room. We, I am not gonna let you go back into the courtroom. Just saying. The, <laughs> the minute the break happens, I'm not letting him go back into the courtroom. <laughs> There were multiple witnesses <laughs> to the precise moment at which the brickmaker was fatally stabbed. Oh, yes. Thank you for the zoom and I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. I am loving this so much. Or dar. Or dar. <laughs> or dar. <laughs> or dar. <laughs> When when the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage. And they were witnesses to the crime. This is not just a case of compelling evidence. I need to calm down, because every time he does the finger point, I just... I, I can't. <laughs> I can't calm down. the nail in the coffin for the accused. Right. <clears throat> I swear I'm gonna like forget a lot of de like important details because I'm just like just fangirling over Fancy's. <laughs> Thank you counsel. The circumstances of the crime have been made quite clear. I think we will hear testimony from these witnesses first of all. He wishes my commands. <laughs> Bailiff, bring the witnesses in at once. <laughs> okay, let's let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. Witnesses, your names and occupations. My name is well. Everyone calls me Beppo. Aww, that's a cute name. I, I drive an omnibus in the East End. Hello, Mr. Beppo. Fair play. <laughs> Bruce Fairplay. I'm a banker. In oh, that's funny. His name is Fairplay, and he's a banker. That's funny. First. My name's First. Ladies first. Oh, ladies first. But he makes hats for, for gentlemen, which is kind of funny. It's contradictory. <laughs> Lady first. Let's begin by confirming the facts. Three days ago, at a short time after 10 o'clock in the evening, all of you present in the stand where were, were in an omnibus and witness to the aforementioned incidents. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Quite right. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Very well, then. Let's proceed to your formal testimonies, please. Each of you will tell the court precisely what you saw. What you saw with your eyes. Witness testimony, let's go. What the witness saw. All right, I need to be serious. Are, are we bringing back the finger command? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But, but, but I, I, I need to calm. I need to calm the thirst that is inside me right now for Van Zeeks. <laughs> and take the case seriously. <laughs> It it was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers. I remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. And then, out of blue, the accused just reached over and plunged the knife right into his guts. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did. I couldn't help it. Right. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus, and, and then I saw it, too. Right. Hmm. Unambiguous testimony, I must say. Exactly, my lord. These men witnessed the incident in the omnibus with their own eyes. Their own special eyes. Um, I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Yes, counsel. Well, this testimony... 
makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why not? Well, the incident took place inside a moving carriage. Did it? it? <laughs> Didn't it? God, I could never say that word without stuttering. As has been clearly stated from the outset, yes. Well, in that case... How could those two witnesses possibly have seen what happened? There's no way they could have seen the inside of the moving carriage. It, it's, it's, it's an omni thing, I guess. How quaint. I had read that civilization in the Eastern Island nation was a good century behind our own. But you're here in London yourself. Are you really so ignorant about our omnibuses? Yeah, uh, omni meaning it's, it's, it's a lot. So, like, a lot? Big buses. Huh? Tell me, my Nipponese friends, have you even traveled in an omnibus? N well, no. We um, only arrived in London this morning. No matter. I've arranged for us all to see for ourselves the actual scene of the crime, that is. What, what do you mean? The actual scene? How? A carriage is designed to be moved, after all. Presumably, you understand that much. <clears throat> um, y yes. The omnibus in which this bloody crime took place is here today in this very building. Here? W w what? The entire carriage? Bailiff. They bring forth the stricken omnibus. Oh my god. That's an omnibus? The omnibus. I can't believe they could bring something so enormous in here. Great Britain's courtrooms are amazing. Yeah, what the fuck? As you can see, the omnibus is pulled by two horses and can carry up to eight passengers. Four passengers seated inside the enclosed cabin, and another four on the rooftop deck above. Every Londoner, Londoner knows that the best views of the city's architecture and sights are to be had from the top of an omnibus. And I should point out to our foreign guests that there is a skylight in the roof allowing a view of the interior from the seats above. A skylight? Oh! The penny drops at last, I see. These two gentlemen were occupying the rooftop seats on this omnibus when the murder took place. That is how they came to witness the grim incident. Through the skylight. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Well, counsel, this is a first. In all my years behind the bench, I've never experienced a crime scene itself being brought into the courtroom. There are a number of important clues remaining inside the carriage, my lord. I would like to submit the omnibus itself as evidence. That is the prosecution's wish, and your wish is granted. <laughs> oh god. Very well. I see no reason. Why not? This omnibus is hereby formally accepted as evidence. The omnibus has been introduced to the court, court record. <laughs> I can't believe it, the entire crime scene entered as evidence. Yes, Great Britain is simply extraordinary. I could help myself a lot by giving that uh, uh, omnibus, uh, omnibus, <laughs> the omnibus, <laughs> a thorough examination, seeing as it's here. Let us continue with proceedings then. Your cross, your cross examination counsel. <laughs> Pray don't expect this Nipponese stray to understand the intricacies of a British court's cross-examination rights. Right. We can do this. 
All right, my first cross examination in your British courts. Ooh, let's go. Focus, Ryunosuke. Focus. Yes, I need to focus myself. I need fo to focus off of Van Zeke's. Focus, Rose. Focus. <laughs> my omnibus. <laughs> Cross-examination. What the witnesses saw. Alright, um... No, 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 um... Ugh, okay, whatever. Okay. First of all, I need to read this shit. Okay, thrice fire Mason. Uh-huh. 15 February, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Stabbed once in the abdomen with a knife while journeying in an omnibus. Died due to internal hemorrhaging resulting from the trauma. Okay. Okay. The leather gloves the defendant was wearing. This is definitely blood, isn't it? Not the most pleasant sight to be confronted with on our first day in London. Well, nothing will come of grumbling now. No. By the way, is Mr. McGilded right-handed? Yes, I believe so. He was toying w with the coin w with his right hand a little earlier. Ah, pity. If only he'd been left-handed. I think blood on either glove would be fairly incriminating, really. I guess. Alright. The eight seater omnibus that was the scene of the crime, there are passengers both decided to da da da. Well, let's open the door and go inside, shall we? Uh, the scene of a murder. It's horrible. I want to examine this first before I actually cross-examine. Oh. Okay, this is a pretty snazzy, snazzy carriage. Okay. That's blood that's soaked in, in, in into the seat. The victims, obviously. Yes, and that seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck. Would you really stab somebody in full view of the other passengers like that? I wonder. Well, it was after dark. There was a lamp on in here, so perhaps the cul the culprit uh, couldn't see anything outside through through the skylight. Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't seem like it, it was a planned attack. Ah, that's a poster for the great exhibi exhibition that's due to start six months from now. There's a lot of focus being drawn to the Crystal Tower, the centerpiece of the whole exposition. Ooh, the Crystal Tower. It's under construction already, I believe. People all over London must be fizzing with excitement at the prospect of such a grand event. Okay, so if that's the case, if he's at the poster, then that means like he would be on the right? On the right side, I'm assuming. I think posters will play a part on positioning. Ah, that's a poster for the Great Exhibition that's due to start six months from now? Okay. <clears throat> The seat ha has a handle, it seems. Oh. <clears throat> this looks like all sorts of equipment that might be needed to keep the omnibus running. Feeding tubes, tools to repair wheels, blankets, horse, shoeing tools. So it's a storage compartment for the coachman to keep his things, it seems. There doesn't seem to be a any space for passengers to stow their luggage, that's for sure. Well, I don't imagine there would be- it, 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 it would be very convenient for that purpose anyway. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, what else? I guess that, yeah. It's quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite large enough to afford a good view into the cabin from the roof deck. And there doesn't appear to be a handle or catch of any description. So I suppose it can't be opened from inside the cabin at least. Right, I think we examined. Oh, I thought on the right corner. I thought that was an eye. 
<laughs> I thought like in this area right here, when I turned this way, I thought that was an eye. I don't know why. I really thought that was an eye. Font change for English things, but yeah, I figured. Just how the, the first case was. Have you seen enough? Let's step back outside then. Yes, I have seen enough. Uh, anything else that I can examine? So this is the roof deck of the omnibus. Oh, you must have a wonderful view of London streets from up from up here. So people sit all the way up here on on bitter w a winter nights with the cold air rushing past them and they have to pay money to do so <laughs> i can't imagine how cold it must feel that just made me think of something horrible can you imagine being dragged around the the city in the freezing cold as a punishment perhaps that is the real price you paid to stay out late i guess if you say so You can certainly see inside the carriage through this opening, that's for sure. Yes, there's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. So I'm sure the witnesses would have been able to see quite clearly. That's not good for us. Okay. Uh, anything else? Okay, I like that little Easter egg. Phoenix Wright Omnibus. Okay, I like this Easter egg. That's cute. I like that. <laughs> That's a cute little Easter egg. Phoenix Wright Omnibus. That made me happy. That made me really happy. <laughs> okay. Oh, and the sign. No? Okay. I thought it was for the side, never mind. Alright, I think that is it for examining the bus. I think that's all I could examine. Okay, let's get, get back into this. It was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers, remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing each other sat next to each other. Okay, the victim and the man accused of, accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. Okay. Then out of the blue, the accuser just reached over and plunged a knife right into his guts. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did, I couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus and then I saw it too. Okay, yeah, so so he stopped it and then he could have just looked on the top part instead of actually going inside. Okay. Uh, let's press on this one, actually. Hold it! And you saw them through through the skylight in the roof of the carriage. That's right. When you sit up on the the top deck, the windows are right there at, at your feet. There was a lamp on there was a lamp on inside, so I had a pretty good view. The two of them were wearing hats, and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. But there's not a shred of doubt in my mind that it was Mr. Gilded. How can he be so sure? Well, how can I po uh, put it politely? Mr. Uh, Mick Gilded is a gentleman of rather small stature. I couldn't have mistaken him for anyone else. Let's not forget that when the vehicle came to a halt, the only people inside the enclosed cabin were the deceased, Mr. Mason, and Mr. Gilded. There is no room for doubt here. I swear to God, this guy killed himself. Ugh, I really wish there was. Hmm... This is gonna be a tricky one. You actually saw the exact moment it happened. It 
didn't I al already testify to that? Or, or are fair and income hard-working city bankers not considered trust trustworthy these days? Oh, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. This is no good. I've really got... I've really got his back up. Perhaps y y you could just tell us what you saw in, 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 in a little more detail. My lord. Hmm? Juror number three? What's the meaning of this? My mind is made up, my lord. Completely and utterly made up. Made up about what? I don't like the stinking rich. Never have. They're always up to something or... Or, or other that they shouldn't be. Every one of them. And that little leprechaun of a man is no exception. Well, you can't fool me. There's no point wasting time listening to any more of this. That's my opinion on the matter anyway. That is precisely what I was about to say. As a foreman of jury, it's my duty to set a good example to my fellow jurors. Can I finish? What the? What is happening here? Let me see. Ah, yes, it seems that's how the members of the jury give their verdicts. With fire? Apparently, yes. White for innocent and black for guilty. As the six members of, of, of the jury make up their minds about the case, one by one, they each cast a ball of fire I I into the great scale scales of justice as we saw a moment ago. So if those enormous scales fall completely to the black side, does that mean we, we lose? Let's do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, now I'm even more worried than I was before. Very well. The court acknowledges uh, acknowledges the change in the jury's stance. Counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. This is a nightmare. This is stressful. What the fuck? That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed. I, I did. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus and then I saw it too. All right, so when it happened, the only two people in the enclosed cabin area were the victim and the defendant. And, so help me, three whole people witnessed the man I'm trying to defend do the deed. I don't like to be pessimistic, but we do seem to be in a rather difficult situation here. What am I supposed to think here? Is Mr. Gilded really innocent? Or could it be... Before we jump to, to conclusions, our first task should be to gather information. We need to understand the case much better than we do at the moment. Yes, you're absolutely right. Let's listen to those who uh, uh, witnessed the statement again a little more carefully this time. Okay. Let me... Okay. Alright, and then I'm just, I, I just want to see inside it one more time. Just to make sure. Okay. Just to make sure. Okay, yeah, so they could have... That's the light. Yeah, there's a light in there. Okay. So he's saying they were sitting next to each other. Okay. Alright, I'm just trying to like ingrain this in my mind. Magnifying glass. We. Hmm. Okay. 
next to each other inside the bus. Then out of the because he reached out over and plunged a knife into his guts. Hold it! Will I get the same thing again? You actually saw the exact moment it happened. Didn't I already testify to that? Oh! Hmm. Or are fair, dinkum, hardworking city bankers not considered trustworthy these days? This is no good. I've, I've really got this back up. Perhaps you could tell us what you saw in, in, in a little more detail if, 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 if you don't mind. Why didn't you ask the young man next to me? Oh, me? Oh, well, yes. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did. I I, I, I couldn't help Hold it. it. Okay. He stabbed him, you say, and you were sitting up on the, the roof deck, were you? Yes, that's right, sir. I was up on the roof seats. I remember seeing the little gents uh, sitting next to the fellow that was stabbed. I'd been thinking about a new hat, hat design, you see, so I was gazing absentmindedly around. But then, but then, then I happened to look down through the skylight. It it was sticking right out from his belly, that, that huge great knife. <laughs> a grim sight indeed. Uh, that didn't help me at all, no it didn't. The jury look like they're even more convinced my client, client did it than they were before. Oh my fucking god. That appears to have made everyone even more dubious that Mr. Gilded is telling the truth. If only we had some evidence to counter their suspicions. Mr. First. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Is this... Is this the knife you saw? Oh, good grief. Yes, that's it. The very one, sir. Is... is that? Yes, Council. This is the blade that was driven into the victim's belly like a stake through the heart. That is a blade of considerable size, Council. It is. And furthermore, the scabbard is... Em... Em... Emblazoned? Pr not prominently with a certain initial. Em... Emblazoned? In... In... I... Whatever. Emblazoned. <laughs> The letter M, which means, which seems oddly familiar. Please no. <laughs> this is this is actually kind of hard. M for Magnus, perhaps, or make Gilded possibly. Take your pick. Emblazoned. Emblazoned. Blads. Blah blah. Embaba. Embor. <laughs> It seems this particular big name in London made a magnificent mistake. Objection. <laughs> Slap. But there there are M's everywhere. Like like yes, like in Mason. Objection. Oh, he has a blue objection. This blade is far too extravagant for a poor poor brickmaker to have owned. No, this weapon of murder almost certainly belongs to the accused. Oh boy. Hmm. Not conclusive, but certainly compelling, counsel. The murder weapon has been entered into the court record. My lord, if you'll forgive the interruption. Ah, juror number two. Go on. Mr. McGilded is a pillar of society and a gentleman, and a gentleman's word should be... Sacrosanct. Sacrosanct. Sac sacred. <laughs> However, those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Wait, what are you about to dispose of the rubbish? Oh my fucking god, you bitch. You bitch. Can I finish? No. I don't wish to cause offense, but I do like to uh, uh, eradicate all traces of filth and grime. Can I, f can I finish? I have painstakingly typed every word uttered here, uttered here today and cross-referenced all the facts. As such, I am now in a position to draw the only logical conclusion. Not again. 
That's four out of six jury members who propose a guilty verdict. There are only two left. We've had it. Every time I press these witnesses for more information, I just make the situation worse. Nevertheless, what we need more than anything at the moment is more information. We're still very much in the dark. I suppose I'll just have to keep pressing the witnesses, knowing that more sparks may well fly. We mustn't give up hope that we'll uncover something that will give us a way to fight back. But... Oh boy. Alright. I'll keep trying. I can't give up. I just need to keep calm and listen to the witnesses' statements again. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus, and then I... Then I saw to Wait, no, 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 no. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. The victim accused of man were at. Oh, wait, let me go to the. That part is the chief, isn't it? Are you alright, Mr. Nutterhold, though? Hmm? Oh, sorry, yes. I just don't really like blades. Oh. Those don't seem like the words of a man with a large katana slung from his waist. That's not a blade, that's Kazuma's soul. Anyway, <laughs> get it right, Sasato. <laughs> There's no sense in delaying it. Let's see what the blade looks like. Oy. Ugh, that looks like a lot, a lot like blood. It surely is blood. The victims. Uh, an Englishman's blood looks a lot like a Japanese man blood. Did you think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just that we've only just arrived here in Great Britain. I'm finding it a little hard to adjust. Yes, I do un understand. I mean, they're both people. Like, the fuck? An ornate letter M. Undeni undeniably Mr. Magnus McGilded McGilded's initial. And it's beautifully gilded too. It must be very valuable, I should think. Uh, what is it? Look at this M. If you turn it upside down, it becomes a W. This could change everything. A W? Yes, this is one of those, you know, turnabout cases. I'm sure I'm sure of it. I'm afraid I don't know at all, but what I am sure of is that this is an M. Oh, well that idea was quickly was quickly quashed. No, but he has he has a point though. It could be a W. He has a point. He had it set to M for mini when he needed it for W for Wumbo. <laughs> yes, I needed it for Wumbo. You know what, Loki? That joke it would have came to me sooner or later. Sooner or later, that joke would have came to me. It could be W. It actually could be a W. Okay. The now the accused reach over and plunge a knife right to his guts. He stabbed him, I couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus and then I saw it too. Hold it! Um, what exactly did you see? Oh, well, sir, that would be the passenger, sir. Yes, c collapse on the floor he was. And by the passenger, obviously, you're referring to the victim, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. And and then the other passenger that... Passenger had that knife in his hand, like this. By the other passenger. Obviously, you're referring to the accused, Mr. Magnus McGilded. And then plunged it down like this. Stabbing the other passenger in the... in the belly. 
what? How could you have seen it though if what? Or dar. <laughs> or dar. It is hard to believe. It is hard to believe of one of London's greatest philanthropists. But this is damning indeed. The law knows no philanthrop no philanthropists, my lord. Only the innocent and the guilty. Good deeds mean nothing. When overshadowed by evil, the truth is everything. Couldn't agree more, sir, the truth. Alright. So when it happened, only two people in the Oh my god. Uh I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Okay, I'm, I am fucking stuck. Okay. I got to push through this. I swear to God, if he's like, I had like four people. Hold it! Yes, I think it was sometime after 10, wasn't it? Oh, yes, sir. That's right, sir. Yes. Ever so cold it was. Freezing, in fact. And you had four passengers on board at the time. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's right, sir. Not all traveling in the same parts of the bus, of course. No. Wait, wait. It was four? Both inside the seat that night. Does, there were passengers both inside the carriage and on the roof that decked that night. Okay, four. Yeah, four. Okay, yeah, four, four, four. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I thought different. Anyways, uh, not all traveling the same parts of the bus, of course, though. No. And there were no other passengers when the incident took place. No one alighted, for example? You're quite right with that, sir. No other passengers like that. No. None. So nobody fled the scene of the crime, then. I have to say, the boss insists on it r running, he does, every evening, that last, that last bus of the day. But I do wonder sometimes if it's altogether worthwhile. Yes, sorry to say. But what do you mean by that? Well, with it being so cold and everything, and only making 20 pence on the run, you, you see, Yes, I, I, I spend that much at the pub on the way home, just trying to warm up again. I, I, I just can't... I can't believe it, sir. Can't believe it. A murder on my own bus? It's too awful to think about. I, I haven't been able to shake this cold ever since it happened. My lord, I wish to speak. You need to shut the fuck up. Alright? Yes, juror number five. Do I take it that you too? As the master of the London Guild of Coachmen, the idea of a murder being committed in one of the city's carriages is, is utterly apparent of... Um, fuck, just, just, just do it. It wouldn't be right to make a decision before hearing all the facts, though, I said to myself. But I've heard enough now? The horse has bolted as they say... Oh, you motherfucker. No, no, please, just, just keep an open mind. Gee, now Silver Blaze, the finish is in sight. Oh my fucking god. Beppo is a long-standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Oh, thank you, sir. You're t too kind, sir. Ugh, this is too unkind, sir. Which now means that five jurors agree to condemn this man. This better all be scripted. Grandma! Grandma! Madame Juror number six. No, Grandma. Yes, dear, what can I do for you? You have heard the testimonies of the witnesses in the stand. Grandma, no! Grandma? Oh, yes, I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know? As you should. <laughs> then pray tell, why are you yet to pronounce your, your lean- Because she's a smart granny. She has wisdom. Well, dear, the thing is, 
I'm a creature of habit, me. I always go to the park at around this time of day and sit on a nice bench and get on with my knitting. Mm -hmm. There's a lovely l l little park just near where I live. McGilded Park, it's called. The gentleman donated it to the city, you know, to, to put a smile on Londoner's face, he said. I can't imagine such a fine young a, a young gentleman would have it in him to, to take another man's life. He's always doing wonderful things for the city. That's right, a man like that wouldn't stab someone, surely. Mother, may we go to the McGilded Library later and borrow some more books? How many Londoners live with their heads in the clouds? Do you people not know? What kind of man Mr. Magnus McGilded really is? Okay, Van Zeeks, like, he would just have me with that move alone. His finger pointing is the best pointing animation ever. So far in this game. What kind of a man is he? The philanthropist Magnus McGilded has enough wealth to purchase in the entire city he claims to value so highly. But where did all that wealth come from? Your client is a Shylock, sir, and one with the very darkest of souls. What? Stone the Crows! McGilded lends money at at ex extortionate rates of interest, so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When the default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've I've never heard any mention of that before. Your faculties haven't deserted you, I'm sure, madame. So has this thought not crossed your mind? Would a man wealthy enough to buy London in its entirety not have a carriage of his own? See, okay, okay, see, he does put up a good point. What possible reason could this man have had to make use of a public omnibus service? Um, you're not saying that the victim, a poor brickmaker, had next to nothing to his name, saved considerable financial liability. It will come as no surprise that his creditor was the accused, Magnus McGilded. But let it also be known that the very day Mr. Mason was killed was the final repayment date for his debts. Good gracious. The brickmaker was destitute. He had lost his house. He, he had lost his house. He had not a shilling with which to repay his debts. And in the end, his pitiful soul had the very last thing he owned taken from him. His life. By the, mercy, by the merciless philanthropist pretender, Magnus McGilted. I don't believe it. Hold it. If I might add something briefly, I am containing myself. Very good. <laughs> Mrs. Sato? You claim that the victim had been lent money by Mr. McGilted. But where is the evidence to support your claim? <laughs> Van Zeeks, where is where is your evidence? Uh. Did 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 he did yes? Just just take me. <laughs> just take me right now, Van Zeeks. Take me. <laughs> Take me! <laughs> oh my god. I, that is the luckiest wine glass. Dude, I, let me be in your wine glass. You can drink from my wine glass anytime. <laughs> I could be your wine glass, Fancy. <laughs> oh my god. Look, I was controlling myself. And then he pulls off that. Come on! <laughs> Stop about me knowing your type. Go away, chaos. Go away. <laughs> You've been with me for too long. <laughs> okay, okay. It it is 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 getting hot in here. 
but I'm gonna keep on all my clothes. <laughs> oh my god. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollow chalice in a court of law. <laughs> there it is. Lord Van Zeke's hollow chalice. Ooh. How could this be considered acceptable? But I find myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from the Far East should show great courage, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. What? As, as judicial assistant to the defense, I am simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. This is a debtor's ledger which details all monies loaned by the accused. You will find the victim's name clearly recorded inside. Oh. Allow me to present this ledger as evidence. Oh my god. And pray forgive the discourtesy of raising my chalice and a toast to the enigmatic East at the same time. Oh, look, you can- this is- see, this is water, but I- I give a toast to meeting you tonight. <laughs> You made Rose very happy. <laughs> you made me very happy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, jeez. On Marvelous Toast Council, I will gladly accept this new evidence. The Dexter's Legends has been added into the core record. <sighs> this is the best day ever. <laughs> yes, Tony Guinness. The victim owed a considerable sum. And the accused made quite certain that he had ample recompense. Yeah. Well, it would seem I've... I've... Had the wool pulled over my eyes. Granny, no! G granny, 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 granny. Regrettably, madame, that is the modus operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little part, too. What a scoundrel. <gasps> granny! No! Granny! Granny! Still. Maybe it's all for the. Ba oh, granny! You, you, you go back to your fucking knitting, Granny. You better knit the shit of that thing when I'm done. I don't stand for nonsense. Oh, my f That was it. The last juror's decision. According to this encyclopedia of, Br of British law, when all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. The final verdict. It's over then. Oh. Oh? There's a footnote though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I like footnotes, yes. However, the defense... All six members of the jury are now in agreement in this case. Allow me to convey my respect for your swift and righteous decision. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial by delivering my final verdicts. I trust there are no objections. Uh, you better raise your Japanese hand and say objection. Mrs. Sato, just tell me one thing. Oh, y yes. You were in the middle of saying something before. The footnote in your encyclopedia of British law. However, however, the defense. What did it say next? Oh, yes. Uh, of course. One moment. When all members of, of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended and the presiding judge will, will deliver the final verdict and sentence. Then the footnote says, however, the defense 
has the right to demand a summonation examination of the jurors at this point. We're gonna do this. A summonation? Examination? Objection! Oh no, we're gonna do this. A summonation examination. From which century has that tome you have there been resurrected? What? Judging from, from the binding, I would say that book is at least 50 years old. Any modern text on British law wouldn't even give such an antiquated procedure a mention. It's a relic, long forgotten and certainly no longer prax practiced. So, you're out of luck. Oh. Can you let me do it anyway? What even is it, Mr. Sato? This so-called assumination examination. Oh, um, one moment and I'll, I'll read about it. You would demand the right to a procedure before you even understand what it entails? <laughs> Typical Nipponese. All right, Mr. Narahodo, I think I understand. It seems that under this procedure, we would be able to appeal to the members of the jury. To do what exactly? Appeal to them to change their leaning and reverse their decisions. And it says here that if successful, the proceedings of the trial must be resumed. Make them reverse their decisions. Yes, in times gone by, Barristers would use a summonation examination to attempt to influence the jury's decision. But that procedure became something of a formality with no practical benefit, really, so it rather fell out of use. I wonder why. Because it was devoid of purpose. What? Changing just one member of the jury's mind would be hard enough, let alone several. No self-respecting defense defense Barrister would even assert his right to try in this day and age. Well, we're about to do it. Still, I don't see any mention of the procedure actually being formally revoked. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that although it may be antiquated and largely forgotten, it isn't yet extinct. She got you there, Van Zeeks. What do you think, Mr. Nutter though? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do the summonation of the e e e examination. <laughs> summonation. <laughs> a summonation examination. Our last possible option. Do we assert our right? Yes, we assert our dominance in this court. The defense wishes to assert its right to summonation examination, my lord. Objection! My lord. London is the capital city of the most powerful nation on earth. We have a duty to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of judi judicial procedure. Some nation examinations are an embarrassment that would that should remain buried. Objection. But if it's our right, it's our right. I believe it could prove vital in this trial. The defense's petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the summonation examination. This is madness. Foreman, are you and the remainder of the jury ready? Yes. Well, um, I, I'm not, um, there was no mention of this in, in, in the letter I received, you see, so, you may fuck you. All members of, of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached their, on, reached their decision. On what grounds? You must all justify your decisions and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Well, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. This is most irregular. No mention was made of this before. I don't really hold with all this justifying lark. Now you stay quiet. That seems to have thrown the jurors off. It seems n none of them have experienced this before. All right then, summonation examination. A defense procedure no practicing lawyer, lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for to turn this trial around. 
So be it then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant Magnus McGilded guilty of this most serious crime. Time to get at these bitches, <laughs> for real. Judicial findings, let's go. The jurors' contentions. Jurors' contentions. There was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it has, it has to have been him. I trust the driver. He was an excellent, he has an excellent memory, it seems. Four passengers with fares totaling 20 pence. Didn't he say that he, he only had a total of five? Pence or monies? I don't know. He stuck the chap next to him just like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. I have simply typed and collated all the statements made thus far and drawn the logical conclusion. You can trust the guild. Fair, fair fares is our motto. We, we haven't raised prices above a four pence for years. The scoundrel stabbing that poor man on the floor. It beggars belief. He didn't stab him on, 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 on the floor, though. I'm starting to wish I hadn't pushed for this now. Some of the jurors don't seem to have wonderfully formed ar arguments, though, do they? Well, let's see what we can do. We need to get these six people to change their minds. I'll have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive language. Use very persuasive English. <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Nutterho, though. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Oh? I thought I, I, was, I was going to have to thaw their icy minds with some heartwarming... R heartwarming r rhetoric about the defendant. Unfortunately, once the jurors have decided that the defendant is guilty, they're unlikely to heed anything the defense says. But but then, they've reached their conclusions by their own reasoning, you see. Your pleas will sound like excuses. In fact, it could recoil on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entrenched they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Oh dear. I'm just citing what I read about what I've read about British law, Mr. Naruhodo. Right, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea how to make this work then? Well, from what I can, from what I can un 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 understand, the key to this procedure is using the juror's own words to make your arguments. What do you mean? Well, six members of the jury are randomly selected members of the public. They may appear to present a united front, but the truth is, they are complete strangers who just happen to find themselves here in the courtroom together. And that's the way to break them down, you mean? Yes, exactly. We must listen very carefully to what each member of the juror says, and see if we can identify any contradictory statements. If we can, we then contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. I see. So it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. In a way, then, this is similar to a regular cross-examination. Cross oh, yes, I, I suppose you're right. Yes, find contradictions in their statements and pit the jurors against one another to break them down. All right, I might be able to pull this off. No, that's not right. I need to pull it off. I have to pull this off. That's right. That's the Naruho, though, I know. Can we start proceedings, counsel? I would ask you to take a stand for this. I'm expecting a clear and concise rebuttal. Yes, my lord. Let's go. Let's do this. Oh, he's standing? Okay, jury examination. That's cool. I like that. The defense's rebuttal. Let's go. There was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it must have been him. I trust the driver has excellent memory, seems for passengers. Da -da -da. What, stood, what stood out for me though was Granny. Hold it! I really think you should stop waving that needle around. You heard what the good coachman said before. D -d -d -da 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 -da. 
<laughs> Didn't you? The hideous man stabbed the poor fellow just like this. Y yes, that is what he said. You're right. My Guild of Park is such a lovely little place, too. I've always enjoyed resting my legs there on, oh, 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 while I get on with my knitting. And I had thought that anyone who donated such a, a, a delightful place must be a fine fellow indeed. I suppose I was wrong. Whoever would have thought he was a miserable, murdering money lender with not a scrap of remorse? Oh my god, Granny, please. Oh, help. She's, she's as sure as sure can be that he's, he's guilty now. The old lady certainly seems to know her mind, doesn't she? Hmm. So we just need to find two jurors with contradictory statements and pit them against each other. Okay. Much easier said than done. Is that perhaps what you, you were just thinking? How did you know? Well, I took the liberty of doing some research in case you happen to find yourself in such a situation. Shall I read you a, a, a what I found out? It is a little long, I'm afraid. Not- Sure, sure, sure. Very well. Listen to this. During dissemination examination, you will hear the assertions of six members of the jury. In this situation, the counsel for the defense should use X and pit with impunity. Having done so, you'll be able to compare the chosen assertion with those of the other jurors. Select the corresponding buttons to listen to the other jurors' assertions again. Note that you cannot choose the assertion of, of, of the juror you initially selected, nor can you choose asser asser assertions of jurors who have changed their leaning to not guilty already. Once you've compared the various jurors' assertions, work out which two con contradict each other and then pit them together with X to pull them apart. I see. She wasn't joking when she said it was long. The first step is to listen very carefully to what each individual juror has to say. Then I'm sure you'll start to see which ones might not agree quite with each other. Okay, all right then. Let's get this right now. Let's just start pressing. So I never had to. So I never have to listen to that long and boring explanation again. That's the spirit. All right. Press. There was no one else inside that carriage at the time, so it, it has to have been him. Hold it. Certainly, the, the testimonies we've heard suggest the victim and Mr. McGilded were alone inside the carriage. Precisely my point. But. Could there be some other explanation? Something we haven't considered yet. Such as? Well, um, perhaps that's something we could um, all work out together now. Now listen here. Maybe you don't know how things work around here because you're from foreign climes. Foreign climes. But we're here to form our opinions as individuals. And I have. Ugh. Oh dear, he doesn't appear to be in the mood to consider an alternative point of view, does he? No, I'm going to have to pit the jurors against one another like Susata-san said. Finding contradictions in these six people's assertions is the only way I'm, I'm going to succeed. Alright, <clears throat> let's compare. I trust the driver, he has excellent memory. It seems four passengers with fares totaling 20 pence. Chap, just like this, brazen, I'm gonna say absolutely brazen. I have simply typed and collated all, all the statements made thus far and drawn logical conclusion. Most of the time, pressing in these points is not useful. All right. Uh, you, you can trust the guild for fares. Fair fares is a model. We, we haven't raised prices above four pence for four years. Yes. Objection. Oh, let's go. Let's go. 
These two statements clearly contradict each other, yes. Because four times four is 16. <laughs> <gasps> 20 is 5, 10, 50, 20. It's four pence, not five. They do explain yourself, counsel. Yes. Me, oh dear. What have I said? Fun fact, that was shown in tutorial explanation indirectly. Oh, see, I wasn't even paying attention to the tutorial. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the pictures. I was just reading. I swear... On Silver Blaze's main and name, I haven't the first idea what you're talking about. According to the group, oh, he's walking. Oh, okay, this is cool. This is cool. I'm sorry. It's just seeing courtroom animations in old school Ace Attorneys. You never see them actually like move around in the courtroom like this. So this is so cool. According to the group testimony we've heard so far, there were four passengers on the omnibus on the night in question. And according to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took 20 pences in fares. Quite right. I have those precise details typed neatly here in front of me. And juror number five also told us the following. The fare for the omnibus is always four pence. That it is. A fare and convenient single price. Just the way London's carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. In fact, it leaves a glaring discrepancy in the facts. Why, man, why? <laughs> four passengers paying four pence each. If you do the multiplication, yeah, there's an extra passenger. It would be 16 pence. Exactly. As I said, it doesn't add up. The figures are quite different. By four pence, in fact. Or precisely, one person's fare. One person's fare. Yes, in other words, on the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible there was another passenger we've heard nothing about. Good gracious. Ten bucks. I love that man is just an English term to put in sentences, right? No, ten bucks. The killer hid himself inside the little storage thing that we saw. And he hit himself in there. And then, yeah. He did it, hit himself in there, and waited for the moment to, like, escape out. Or, no, no, he couldn't have opened the doors, nothing. If there, was, if there were people inside, he had to have hid inside there. I think he hid in there. This, this can't be right. The coachmen of the guild are good, honest men. One and all. Trustworthiness is, is our watchword. The figures that your coachman claims most certainly do not add up. Your watchword, good sir, is a fallacy. I beg your pardon. He's like, excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Guildmaster, I think you ought to, ought to consider that if this trial were to end now, the news will surely spread all over London. The news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he lets nefarious characters ride his omnibus. Ooh, he got you there. All right, then, how do I make it so this miserable trial doesn't end, hmm? Well, according to my book here, you simply launch a ball of fire into the innocent side of the set of scales. Now hold your horses there, coachman. We were all in agreement. Why do you have to go in? No, he has a brain. Wait till I get my hands on you, Beppo. <laughs> oh, boy. That is right, as it should be. Just throw a token. This is all very irritating. Begging your pardon, sir. I'm going to do the same. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. For the love of Mike, not you as well. A penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear, after all. I certainly can't put my trust in someone who doesn't follow my exacting standards of financial matters. Oh, really? I, for one, think it's only proper that we hear from the witness, from the witnesses again. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruho, though you did it! If we can manage to change two more jurors' minds, we can force the trial to continue. 
two more. Actually, there is something else that's bothering me about a couple of their assertions. Then that's where you must strike next. So I need to pit two more jurors against each other and show there's another contradiction in their assertions. Exactly. You can do it. Yeah, la 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 la. I can do it. La 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 la. That's my like blowing off steam. <laughs> la 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 la. Well, the scales of justice have shifted, but they still weigh heavy on the side of guilt. Council, you have the floor again. Continue with your summonation examination. Summonation. Summonation. I am changing my lean to innocent. I should like to hear what this slip shod bookkeeper has to say for himself. Oh, damn. And, and then what does he say? But well, this trial has to continue so I can get to the bottom of this corruption. Not guilty, I say. Okay, cool. So having that format on the floor. Okay. And then he stuck the chap next to him just like this. Brazen, I must say. Oh, see, he says like this. Granny said on the floor. So you know what? I'm gonna pit you and Granny. Objection. And I'm right. These two statements are completely contradictory. What? Explain, counsel, post haste. Oh, dearie me. I, I was only knitting a jumper for my other half. What is all this claptrap? What does contradictory even mean, I, I ask you? Oh my god. We've heard from more than one witness that they allegedly saw the actual moment when the defendant stabbed the victim. Out of curiosity, juror number three, what? Can't you see I'm busy here? Right. <laughs> How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? What sort of motion was it? Exactly what he was doing. He stabbed him in and then he couldn't... He was pulling at it. He couldn't wedge it out. <laughs> want... Want to test me, do you? It was like this. Stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. Just like the prim banker said. Yes, that was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Now then, juror number six. Oh, is that me, is it? What, what, what can I do for you, young man? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, dear, as far as I understand it... It was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he'd collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. You are wrong. Now don't move. Take a look at these two jurors. He stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he'd collapsed on the floor. Well, I never. They're... They're stabbing in totally different directions. What? Bless my stitches, what a muddle. What this tells us is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. I think it's Granny. Oh. But why? Why the dickens would they lie? I don't know that yet, but, but what I do know is that if the trial ends at this point, we, we may never find out. We, we, we may never know the real truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you really let that happen in all good conscience? Lies, you say? Oh, dearie me. I can't abide people telling lies. Yay! Thank you, Granny! Even though you're a fucking bitch. The, uh, the scales. I don't believe it. Wait! Now, hear this, my fellow jurors. I warn you, you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in his black suit. He's, he's clearly some devious eastern sorcerer using magic on us all. If I could use magic, do you really think I'd be putting myself through all this? <laughs> Answer me this, dark jinx. Huh? M me? What exactly is the problem? What of it if two witnesses have slightly different recollections of events? What of it? Let's say this Shylock did stab the victim as he, he was sat next to him on the omnibus. And this young lady, and this young dandy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor and then the Shylock stabbed him again. And this old lady saw him do it. Well, what's to say it, it didn't happen like that, hmm? 
Who are you calling a dandy, sir? Why? I should take this knife. I should take this knife to you. Who are you calling old? Why? I should take this needle to you. <laughs> uh, they're ready to kill each other now. And he's read the court evidence, evidence in a single stab. But could the form, foreman of the jury be right? Did the two witnesses see two different moments of the same crime? Just making sure. Mm -hmm. Single step. Single. One step. It is out of, out of the question. Single. Just making sure. Out of the question. Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Hmm. What is it, you dark jinx? Come on. Out with it. What you're suggesting is impossible. It's out of the question. What are you talking about, man? How can you possibly say that? You, you, you do realize that I'm only doing my job. As foreman of the jury, I have a responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. So where's your evidence, man? That's what we want to see. I say the two... The two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. If you say that's out of question, show me some proof. It looks like the only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with something he can't dismiss. Some irrefutable hard evidence. As you wish. What? I'll give you the proof. It's out of the question that the two witnesses saw two different moments of, of, of the same crime as proven by... Autopsy report. Take that! Yes. This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, Mr. Mason was stabbed in the abdomen. Only once. Only once? It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely one time. Which means these w witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. Exactly. Thank you. All right, I concede defeat. Yay, court is back in session. I did it. You did it. Wait, that that means four jurors are now leaning not guilty. We've done it, Mr. Narihodo. We've won. What are you playing at, dandy fool? Shut up, trap. Shut your trap, sir. No one deceives me. But we had a consensus. I said shut your trap. I know a liar when I see one. And if the chap ever dares to cross the threshold of my shop, I'll take this razor sharp blade and shove every last hair off his head. Why are you look? Can you stop licking in like that? God, he's- Ew. <laughs> it's so gross. Jesus. Please tell me he's a barber. <laughs> God. Well, I'm a quite remarkable, well, in a quite remarkable turn of events. The defense's summonation examination has flipped the balance of the scales of justice. The jurors now stand at two for guilty and four for not guilty. Accordingly, there is no longer a large enough majority among the jury for me to adjudicate. And the trial must continue. Yay! We did it! I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witnesses to return to their places. And I call upon all of you to continue to pursue the truth. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Lord Van Zeeks, continue to subs substantiate the case for the prosecution, if you please. Now, let's stop it here. Yeah, this is gonna be long. Safe. This is a very good session. A very good session. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. I always appreciate it. I had loads of fun on this case. Way too much fun on this case. But it is that time for me to go. 
but we we this is gonna be a full ass week of ace attorney so this we're, we're gonna be ace attorneying this all throughout this week i'm excited and hyped just to see the conclusion of this case i'm just this game is amazing <laughs> but anyways thank you guys so much for stopping by i appreciate it and i will see you tomorrow bye bye